Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Andrew Fillion, and today I want to talk to you guys about insulin sensitivity, insulin resistance, and the effect sugar has on our bodies. So let's kick things off and give you guys an analogy here. Think about a bonfire. When you build a bonfire, you've got a lot of wood in there, right? When you light the fire, how much wood you have in the bonfire is going to determine the size of the bonfire. Well, if we have a few logs in there, the bonfire is not going to be all that bright. But if we take a ton of wood and throw it in, you're going to get this massive fireball. And through that, you're going to have a very hot bonfire. But the thing is, it burns out quickly. Our bodies are much the same way when it comes to sugar. Sugar is a really big problem, and I'm going to show you guys why exactly that is. When we consume sugar, it causes what we call an insulin spike. Now, insulin on its own is not actually a bad thing. The purpose of insulin is to switch your body from using its own fuel sources, our body fat, into shuttling nutrients from our food into the rest of the body. This doesn't just mean storing fat, it also means shuttling nutrients to your muscles. So insulin is actually a good thing. You're going to need it in order to regulate your body and maintain homeostasis. But let's not forget that storing body fat is part of our body's overall procedures. Out in nature, this can be a really good thing if you're going long periods of time without food. But that's not the culture we live in anymore. That's not the reality for 99% of people. The reality is that food ends up getting stored as fat. And insulin resistance is the culprit. So this is how insulin resistance works. When we eat food, our insulin levels rise. The more resistant you are to insulin, the more food it takes for your body to start shuttling nutrients. Here's the issue, calories in, calories out. Just because our hormones are out of balance doesn't mean that the food we're taking in isn't being used. It's just not signaling to our brain as effectively. So what's really happening when you're insulin resistant, you feel more hungry, you eat more food, but then you feel less full and that is because of the insulin resistance. All that food you take in, still gets stored as fat. This is why someone who has a high carbohydrate diet, specifically with a lot of sugars and foods high in the glycemic index, find that they're very hungry shortly after eating. Think about that bonfire analogy earlier. You throw a ton of wood into the fire, you get the massive fireball, but shortly after it burns out. That's why if you have things like white rice, or if you're eating a lot of bread, especially white bread, enriched wheat flour is a big culprit for this. You're gonna be hungry very shortly after, and it's not actually hunger. It's your body craving more sugar to maintain that massive fireball of a bonfire but it's unsustainable. And so you end up just storing a ton of body fat. What we want to be is insulin sensitive. When our bodies are insulin sensitive, that means that we require less insulin to trigger to the brain to start increasing insulin levels, which means we're gonna go from fat burn mode to fat storage mode without requiring a massive hoard of food. This is why someone like me that's on a 2200 to 2500 calorie diet can go all day without feeling hungry and still be getting all the nutrients I need is because I'm going after high quality foods and when I have carbohydrates, they're going to be high in fiber. So I'm eating a lot of potatoes, I'm eating a lot of pumpkin, I'm eating blueberries. All of these things have carbs in them, but the fiber helps me stay insulin sensitive. This is going to help me not put on the fat in the first place. And if I've got fat to burn, I can get started a lot faster. Sugar is the main culprit when it comes to building insulin resistance. So if we can reduce sugar in our diet as much as possible, it's going to go a long way in keeping you insulin sensitive, which is what you want to be. So whether you're beginning a diet or trying to maintain, the things you really want to avoid are going to be things that are high in the glycemic index. Anything made from unbleached wheat flour, that's going to be really bad. Corn syrup, terrible. This is going to be the highest insulin spike. So we're talking candy, syrups desserts, pretty much any snack that comes in a bright colored package is probably going to have high fructose corn syrup in it. Avoid that completely. Just get it out. You don't need it. 
This one's a little bit debatable, but white rice can also be a killer because as much as white rice is good for athletes, it's very easy to overdo the white rice. And no matter how much white rice you eat, you never feel full. And that is because it builds up insulin resistance. So as much as I do like white rice for athletes, if you're trying to lose body fat or if you're trying to maintain your current physique without doing you know a tumultuous amount of exercise i would say stay away from the rice instead what you could replace it with are going to be potatoes potatoes are amazing you guys will hear me talking about potatoes from now until forever just eat potatoes that's your best carbohydrate source other great options are going to be things like squash. So squash comes in a few different varieties. You guys know me. I'm always eating pumpkin. And then berries. Berries are so low on carbohydrates that you cannot really gain weight eating them. Now, I'm a big blueberry guy. You can go after strawberries, blackberries, raspberries, or get all four of them. Try to stick to foods like that. Fruits are good. Just try to stay away from the breads, the rice, and the candies. That's gonna help you stay insulin sensitive so that your body can shuttle nutrients without a crazy amount of calories and you're gonna be able to stay lean year round. And if you're trying to lose weight, this is gonna help you get there. Before we head things out, there's something right down here that I'd love if you guys could click. It helps me out and it helps you out because you're going to get more information from me right down there. It's up to you. And with that, I'm going to leave this video here. I hope I can get you guys insulin sensitive. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next one. So this is what they mean by torching body fat. I ran out of one-liners, I don't know.